Salut les devoirs de livre. Nous sommes de retour. Ooh, I do love it when you speak French, Richard. That accent drives me wild. Well, then uh, maybe we should delay recording this little podcast, ma chérie, until a little later. Ma oh, no, 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 no. We can't keep everyone waiting. Not for this book. Absolument. C'est la vérité sur le fait Harry Kébert. The truth about the Harry Kébert affair. Why not visit a different world with Richard and Judy, exclusive to WH Smith. Welcome back to the Richard and Judy Book Club with WH Smith. And we're actually, at the moment, on our summer list, our wonderful list of wonderful books for you to read on holiday, at home, in the garden this summer. Let's hope we get some good weather. And we come to a very special one, I think. Uh, it's called The Truth About the Harry Kebert Affair. We'll talk about that name in a minute. And the writer is Joel Dicker, who is with us now and has had the most amazing success with this, his first novel. You, you did write one and you got a, a prize for it, didn't you, earlier? Yeah, I mean, it's my, it's my first novel published in the UK. Right. But it's my second novel published. In Europe. It's in Europe, yeah. And it's my uh, sixth or seventh novel. Oh, gosh. Yeah, but all the other were uh, not published. Well, what language, I mean, what language did you write it in? In French. In French? Yeah. Because your, your nationality is? Swiss. Swiss. I am from yeah, Geneva, you, Switzerland. You live in Geneva. And I have to say, this guy who is, what, not yet 30? 29. 29. Yeah. Six, bo <laughs> six books already. I mean, that is amazing. And this one has been, The Truth About Harry Kaber has been a huge success um, all over Europe. It's sold millions of copies and it's now being published here in the UK and also in the United States. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the name, Harry Kaber. <laughs> I say Kaber because I'm sort of English and like French. But what do you, what do you, how would you pronounce it? Yeah, in the States we would say Harry Kuber, like Kuber. 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 Yeah. It will be very American. Yeah. The thing is, the name Kebert should be Kebert, and you're very right, because when I started to write this book, it was set in the States, so it's a story set in New Hampshire. And uh, I used to spend all my summer there, and I really wanted to, to share with an, an audience, or the, read, read, the readers, my, my past there, and, and all the mem memories I have, and all the beauty of the landscape and everything. But I had this issue to say, how am I supposed to write this book in French and set the story in the, in the United States, mm -hmm. where they speak in, in English? So my first thought was to have a French guy living in the States. That's why it was Kébert. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I decided that it was, it was easier for me to tell a story in English, but in French, if you mm -hmm. see what I mean. Mm -hmm. Because like, if I'm going to the States and I spend some time there and I come back to Geneva and I tell my friends what I've done there, I was speaking French, mm -hmm. so it was the same process. I was like, I just should like write in French mm -hmm. and set the story in English. Yeah. Well, it's tr it translates extremely well into English, and in fact, it's been translated into forty-five different languages, yeah. which shows how incredibly well it's doing. Let's let's get down to the story. I mean, the the, the, the central character is Marcus Goldman, who's a bit like you in a way. He's a young. <laughs> well, he is, he's, is he he's, like you? I mean, he's I mean, he's, he's a young, young he's novelist. a young, hugely successful novelist, except. And I don't get any vanity vibes coming off you at all. He's very vain. He's had a huge hit with his first book. Um, and he's just basically living the life of Riley, isn't he? He's spending money like it's going to be fashion. <laughs> and he's putting off writing the second book. Yeah. He keeps putting it off. He's got a deadline. He's had an advance. He just won't get round to it. <laughs> yeah, he's not me at all. And the thing is, when I started to write the story, uh, I was like studying low, I was struggling with life, I really wanted to publish a book and it was my sixth novel in a row and all the, all the publishing was, sorry, was like, no, it's not good enough, no, I'm not, sorry. Uh. So I was like, I should write a story about a guy who just write a book and it's a massive success, which was exactly unlike me. <laughs> and because, well, you know, like the book also, it's a, it's a good way for the author to, to get out of his own life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it will have been very boring for me to write the story of myself with trying to write a book, but the ones wants this book and then blah, 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 blah. So I was like, I should have a character in the book who will be, of course, slightly like me because he's like 30 ish, he's young. I mean, he's like mm. me on this aspect. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But all the rest, all the success, all the way he's acting with it is. is Imagination. Something. Yeah. Imagination. Okay, well, Marcus drives the story. So tell us about Harry Quebert. Who is Harry Quebert, and what's the relationship between him and Marcus? So Harry is Marcus' former professor at the university. 
And Harry is also a very well-known, very successful author in the United States mm. who had a massive success in 1975 with his first book called The Origin of Evil. The Origin of Evil, yeah. And um, the book really started when Marcus uh, has to write his next novel mm -hmm. because his publishing house is putting a lot of pressure on his uh, shoulders and he's, he's not sure what he wants to write about and he's facing kind of a writer's block and he decides to go back to see Harry, his former pr professor, who is a friend as well, to and help he decided him to go, yeah, yeah. decided to go to his house in New Hampshire and, and to spend some time there and trying to find back the inspiration. And he goes to New Hampshire for a few weeks, comes back to New York with not much idea about his next book. And all of a sudden, he found out that Harry just get arrested by the police because uh, a body just get like buried out of his uh, garden. They found a body of a young teenage girl. Yeah, it's the body garden. of Noah Kilorgan who, who disappeared 30 years ago. And that's the beginning of the story because of course Harry is accused of the murder of Nola. A, because her, Nola's body is found in his back garden. And secondly, because the origin of evil it's actually really written about her, isn't it? Yeah. Because they had a relationship. They had a and, relationship. And at that actually. moment, like, yeah, exactly. At that moment, everybody in the States realized that this book that was released in 1975 was about this young girl and the relationship between a 35 years old man yes. and this girl. It's a kind of a touch so, of Lolita and sort of Humbert Humbert about her, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is, mm. in a lighter way, of course. Mm. Yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, so what we have here uh, in the novel, we do have a thriller. There is a genuine mystery to solve, uh, which Marcus, so loyal to, his, uh, to Harry, to his ex-professor, um, is determined to clear his name. Um, but it's also more than that. It's a very playful book. Yes. It's very... Although it's a thriller, it's also quite funny and entertaining and light. And I, we, I was talking to Richard about it when we read it. I've actually never read anything like it. Do you have mm. a particular inspiration? Do you have a particular author that you look to for, uh, that, that you look up to, that you admire? Yeah, a lot of them. Uh, I love very much uh, French author Romain Gary. Uh, I love Philippe Roth as well very much. Oh, really? All mm -hmm. yeah. oh, right, yeah. But... I will say that I, I feel like what's in the book, the inspiration in the book, it's all the author I've read and I loved. Mm. All the books I've read and loved, and also all the books I've read and I re don't really love because yeah. mm. it's a good advice for me of what I don't want to do. Well, that's and very generous of you to say, because I agree with Judy, actually, that you write in a very distinctive voice. You know, I mean, a lot of writers are quite derivative, really, and that's just the way it is. That's just the business. But, I mean, you know, you think of books like, say, and, and I'm not comparing your book to these, but, say, Cloud Atlas um, or The Time Traveller's Wife. They are very distinctive books. Mm -hmm. You know, you've not really read anything like them before. And I would say that's absolutely true about your book. I've never read a book like this before that, 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 that's, that's, that's processed and packaged and delivered in quite the way that you write. And the fact that it's a translation is extraordinary because it translates beautifully in, in, into English. Um, you must be, and I'm, and I'm not asking you to, to be, show any signs of vanity, <laughs> but you must be really proud of it. You know you've created something very special with this. You, you must know that. <laughs> Come on, I mean, you, you must know. I'm not sure I know it, and thank you so much. I mean, it's so pleasing to hear it. Yes, and it I gives mean it. so much sense to all the work I've done, uh, uh, not only on this book, but all, all the other, other, other books, you know? Because yeah. uh, when you write a book, and you don't really write a book, you write a text yeah. on the laptop in your little room, you know? <laughs> And you're not sure of who is going to read it, mm. who is going to enjoy it. And mm. then you send the text to some people and say, what do you think of the book? And say, ah, it's okay. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it's very frustrating. Gee, but, but you're just like, ah, I would like to write something that people really enjoy, really like. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's like all these books before and all, this, like, all the efforts I've put in to try yeah. to do something different and something very enjoyable. Because a lot of the time people say, yeah, but books are boring. Yeah. Books are not funny, books are like this, books are like that. And also, a lot of the time, people are trying to put books in boxes. Yeah. This is a thriller, this is yeah, yeah. erotic, this yeah. is a comedy, this is I don't know what. But, yeah. And I don't like it as well, because like, books should be like life. There's a lot of things in it, yeah. a lot of joy, a lot of yeah. tears, a lot of everything. And that's what uh, I try to do. I, you, and you've succeeded. Um, I love Marcus. I think he is completely original he's very like i mean he's 
He's annoying. He's very <laughs> annoying, but he's also very, very likable and, and, and very sweet and funny and very loyal. And I love his mother. <laughs> his mother is this American Jewish mother yeah. who is, uh, I mean, really. And are you from a Jewish background? Yeah, yeah, yeah you are. Yes. But the, the mother the is not the mother in the book. I don't <laughs> know, I have to no, mention right. it. Your mother would be furious <laughs> if, she, if she thought she was. Well, we could. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a big book as well. Um, how many pages have we got here? Uh, a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Drop me my reading glasses. Uh, yeah, it's a big book. Let's have, have a look at the, the pages. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're over 600 pages here, but uh, it is not a difficult read. It's a fun read, and actually, when I finished it, I wanted it to run on another couple of chapters, but uh, sadly, we could... It's brilliant, but can I just ask you, before if you're about to kind of wrap this up, can I yes. just ask, Joel, yes. <laughs> have you, like Marcus, have you started a second novel? Are you trying to write another one, or have you finished it? Yeah, I've second my next novel, which is my seventh novel. And I mention it because in the book, Marcus write one book, his yeah. first book, have a success, and then he's blocked. He, he's facing a writer's block. In my case, and thanks to all the work before, I have a different point of view because I quite know the process. Mm. And so that's right. why I mentioned it's my seventh book. I need to say that I'm, it's not difficult. It's a, it's a pleasure. Yeah. Mm. And it's a huge pleasure for me to yeah. be working on a new book, yeah. knowing that there's people that are going to read it. Yeah. So no writer's block for Joel. No, no. Unlike all. the rest of us, okay. <laughs> <laughs> who try so hard. Well, Joel, it's a lovely book. Thank you very thank you, much. Thank you so thank much. You. It's thank already, you as we've said, a number one bestseller uh, around the globe, really. Uh, Joel Dicker, The Truth About the Harry Kuebert, or Kubert Affair. Uh, and if you get it from WH Smith, you get some exclusive content in the back because it's part of our book club, which is exclusive to WH Smith. So you will get uh, the Q&A that Judy and I do, which are different questions from the ones we've asked here. And there's all sorts of other stuff. There's an author's contribution and all kinds of things. But you only get that if you get it from WH Smith. So uh, enjoy. And this really is one to take with you on holiday because it will sustain you uh, in your pleasures. So my process of writing is... I would say it's at the same time very disciplined and a bit messy as well because very disciplined because I'm I wake up very early in, early in the morning I work I uh, sit on my desk and I just like write and write and keep writing all day long but on the other hand I'm very messy because I don't have any plans I don't know what I'm going to write about I'm not sure about what is going to happen in the next part of the book so which means I never really know where I'm going and that's, that's the fun part for, for me because it means that I'm at the same time I'm the reader and the author and I have the surprise every morning to think like what is going to happen today in the book. Knowing that people are going to read and discuss and share my book it's, it's so important to me because it's the next level to me. To know that they are going to share, to, to talk about it, to discuss about it, to have like deep debates what they like, what they don't like in the book. I really love it because the book it's just an object in the end, it's just like a few pages together and there's a story in it. But in really the real life of a book, it's when there's two people that, or many people that has read the book and that's starting to talk about it, to discuss about it, to have endless conversation, to create friendship or to hate each other because they don't agree at all on the book or on, on, on the chapter, on the symbolic in the book. And, and, and that's like the real life of a book. I often get like mails on my website uh, from book clubs telling me like what to talk about and what were the main top topics about my book and I really I really love it I really love like to think that there's in the world some group of people that are talking about the book among my favorite author I would like to mention French author Romain Gary or Marguerite Duras in the I mean I love Philip Roth from the United States I love Dostoevsky as well. I've always loved the Russian literature, but a British author that I love, and it's Roald Dahl. For me, he's such an amazing storyteller. I will say just read one of Roald Dahl's book. It's gonna give you like so much energy. It's so funny, there, there's everything in it. And it's something that you can read or share with everybody. Again, we, we're speaking about sharing, but you, you, you can read it or share it with like old people, young people, kids, teenagers, adults, whatever, and it's always like, it's, it's funny, it's filled with like tenderness, love, joy. It, this, this is what you should read on a Sunday afternoon if you're a bit like bluesy. So we don't think enough of Roald Dahl as a good book to read. What advice uh, should I give to someone who wants to write? Um, I would like to say that the only thing I keep saying to people, just work. 
because it's not like much magical. You don't sit and wait. You just have to work and work and keep working and try again. And it's very, it's a, it's a hard work. Like to write a book, it's long, it's tough, it's difficult. So that's the only advice I will give. It's just like work and keep working and work again and work even harder. Traveling and want to take some great reads with you? Download all the titles in the Richard and Judy Book Club to your Kobo e-reader from whsmith.co.uk. You can even download the free Kobo app so you can read the books on your smartphone, tablet or other e-reader. Le jour de la disparition, 30 août 1975. Centrale de la police, quelle est votre urgence Allô Mon nom est Deborah Cooper. J'habite à Side Creek Lane. Je crois que je viens de voir une jeune fille poursuivie par un homme dans la forêt. Que s'est-il passé exactly exactement Je ne sais pas. Je n'étais pas devant la fenêtre. Je l'ai regardé au bord des arbres et j'ai vu cette fille qui courait dans les arbres. Il y avait un homme derrière elle. Je pense qu'elle essayait de se sortir de lui. Well, c'est un livre extraordinaire. Je veux dire, vous savez, j'ai lu the hype really about it before I started it and my goodness there's been so much hype I mean all across Europe that it's been absolutely devoured and now it's being published for the first time simultaneously I think here in the UK and in the United States mm. um, I loved it I mean I didn't wasn't sure if it would live up to the hype but it does it's so fresh it's a thriller yeah it is a proper murder mystery there is a murder victim there is you know a, a plot to discover who did it did this person do it who's been arrested for it or was it in fact somebody else completely but it's more than that isn't it it's, it's well it's a, it's a book about a book about a book about a book really i mean it, it's like a russian doll each story is contained inside the next one so for example the book that was written 30 years ago by this uh, this professor um, who's one of the main... Harry Kebert. Harry Kebert. Um, the Origin of Evil actually turns out to be pretty much a description of his highly illegal affair with a 15-year-old girl. And then the book itself, The Truth About the Harry Kebert Affair that we're reading, is actually a book about sort of the writing of that book and about the fact that the professor who wrote it is now being prosecuted. And that saga of him going through the courts of law becomes a book in its own right. It, it, it sounds complicated, but it's not. It's very, very simple and damn clever. I've never read a book quite like it. It's very clever, and the saving grace is, is the hero, who is like uh, Joel Dicker, who, uh, who, who wrote this. Um, he is a young man. He's uh, only about 30. And, theoret and in, in America, he has just written his first novel, and it's been a huge success. It's sold millions. And so young Marcus Goldman, the writer, uh, is living the life of Riley, high on the hog. He's made huge amounts of money. He's been fated right across the New York literary scene. He's got a fantastic flat in New York. He's dating a movie star. <laughs> he's having the time of his life, and he's become very, very vain and very, very spoiled. But the book starts when he's been told he's got to write his second novel by the publisher, who's offered him a massive advance, and he absolutely has writer's block. He can't think of a thing to write. And in America, unlike in this country, once you've agreed to write a book, you have to write the book. You can't walk away. And so he's under this terrible pressure to get going. And as you say... Threat of legal action. So he goes to see his old professor, Quebert, for inspiration and advice and guidance. And that's really where the story kicks off. Um, it's, uh, it's a terrific read. It's a long read. There's over 600 pages to this uh, story. But it really is worth it. I, we couldn't recommend it more. It's very, very unusual. And already it's sold 2 million copies around the world. And that tells you something. From the Richard and Judy book club, I've read The Colder Wall. Um, I've forgotten the author, but it was a very, very good book, very interesting, about the spy world, about um, being double spies where they were, you know, on the other side, um, working for the other side. And I, tr I quite like the intrigue of the book and um, the fact you didn't always know what was happening. Claire Kendall's extraordinary book of you, which is a very dark book, and I think that's what kept me gripped all the way through. It dealt with some very uncomfortable issues in a most compelling way. It took you down areas that you thought, hang on, how is this going to turn out? It's a twisty thriller, but it actually deals with real life things, things that happen to real people, and that's what made it terrifically scary. A good summer read for me is I'd probably look at the cover and it'd be all bright and summery. That would make me read the forward. Um, but it would definitely be something that was quick to read, light-hearted, um, with a happy ending. Join us next time as we almost remember a past. A past that never actually happened. 
Funny Girl by Nick Hornby. The very beginning of this book started after a conversation with Rosamund Pike because I worked with her on an education, a film I wrote, and she was brilliant in it and funny and I didn't know that she had it in her mm -hmm. to be a comedian and she said afterwards, nobody ever lets me be funny. That's Nick Hornby with us on the Richard and Judy Book Club podcast.